All right, so review of our trig ratios. So all right triangles that have a common acute angle are similar. So again, that's going back to geometry, what you should have learned last year. So thus the ratios of their corresponding sides are equal. A very, very long time ago, these ratios were given names. These tri trig ratios, as we like to call them, will be introduced through the next exercises. So we're gonna be reviewing these. These ratios are used to find missing angles or missing sides of the triangles, and it all depends on what information you are given. So, here I have a right triangle. Your trig ratios of sine, cosine, and tangent are all dependent upon which angle you are looking at. So, all depends. on which angle. So for this first example here, we are looking at angle A, because we have tan of A, sine of A, cosine of A, so we are down here at angle A. So you first have to figure out what your sides are in relation to that angle. So from angle A, if you go to the complete opposite side of the triangle, that is your opposite side. The side right next to it is your adjacent side. So this one's adjacent. And then your hypotenuse is always opposite from your 90 degree angle. So there is our hypotenuse. That's always in the same spot. That one doesn't flip flop based on your angle. Hypotenuse is always across from the 90. So here are the ratios. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So once you identify which one is which, opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, you can then figure out your ratios. So if we take a look at my example down here, we want to first find sine value of angle A. So I'm down here at angle A. I try to go across, here's my opposite. Four is right next to my angle, so that's my adjacent. And again, opposite of my 90 is always my hypotenuse. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of angle A is 3 fifths. Tangent of angle A is your opposite over your adjacent. So that would be 3 fourths. So now these next two switch it up on us, and they want us to go from angle B. Well, I'm going to take this stuff off. Now here, angle B, now my opposite is 4, and 3 would be my adjacent. So cosine adjacent over hypotenuse would be 3 fifths. Tangent opposite over adjacent would be 4 thirds. So again, it depends on what angle you're looking at. You may have to switch it around because they may flip-flop the angles on you. All right, if x is a positive acute angle and cosine of x is 8 17th, find the value of sine x. So I'm going to first draw a right triangle because they are talking about cosine and sine. So that is your hint that it is a right triangle. It does not matter where we put x. So I'm going to say that this one is my angle x. Cosine, again, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So here's my adjacent side. My hypotenuse is always across from my 90. So in order to figure out sine value, I need to figure out my opposite side over here. So in order to get my opposite side, we have to do our Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to call this O, but that looks too much like a zero. So I'll call this Y only because my angle is referred to as X, so I don't want to reuse the X, so I'm going to call it Y. So this is 64, 17 squared is 289, subtract my 64 over, and I get 225, square root it, and we get 15. So my opposite side over here is 15, so therefore the sine of x is 15 over 17. Next one over here, again, we have another a positive acute angle. 
So I need to make my 90 degree triangle, sine of angle x again. I'm just going to assign x as any angle other than the 90. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. They want me to find tangent. In order to find tangent, I need to figure out what my adjacent side is. This one is one of our Pythagorean triples. So I don't have to do the Pythagorean theorem for it. I already know it's going to be 4 because 3, 4, 5 is one of our Pythagorean triples. So therefore, tangent of angle x is my opposite side over my adjacent side. So tangent of x is 3 fourths. So that's how we set up our basic ratios. So again, as I was saying, those ratios can be used to find a missing side. So I have here all of the steps written out of how you can go about doing that. Read through it if you need to. I'm going to jump into some examples. They want us to find x to the nearest tenth. My angle 35 is right down here at the bottom. So from angle 35, this is my opposite side, and I have my hypotenuse. So that tells me I'm going to be using sine. So sine of the angle is my opposite side over my hypotenuse. To get rid of my fraction, I'm going to multiply both sides by 12. 12 times the sine of 35 equals x. And then I'm going to type it into my calculator. Now what you have to be careful of with your calculator is you have to make sure it is in degree mode. So if I go to my calculator, go to mode, mine is currently in radians. So I'm going to go to it, put it into degree mode, and then I can type in my 12 sine of 35 and I can get my answer. So to the nearest tenth, that is going to be 6.9. So let's try it again for number two. The only difference is times we're going to have to draw our triangle. They did not already draw that for us. So given triangle x, y, z, y is your 90 degree angle. So this is my y, so I'm going to put x and z. They say x is 63 degrees, side yz, or zy is 14. Find xy to the nearest centimeter. So I have my opposite side. I am looking for my adjacent side, so that tells me that's going to be tangent. So tangent of my angle equals the opposite side over the adjacent side. So again, I'm going to multiply by x. It's in order to solve for it, so I have to multiply by x. It was in the denominator. I'm going to divide by tangent of 63. I had 7.13, so to the nearest centimeter, it would be 7. So you set up your ratio, cross multiply. A ladder leaning against the house is shown to the right. What is the distance x from the base of the ladder to the house? This is what they're looking for. There's my angle of 50. So that means this is my adjacent side. My ladder is my hypotenuse. With these kinds of problems, your ladder is always going to end up being your hypotenuse. So that means I'm going to be using cosine. So cosine of my 50 degree angle equals x over 30 adjacent over hypotenuse. So multiply by 30. And then type it into the calculator. So to the nearest foot, that would be 19. Now to go along with this, sometimes they talk about an angle of elevation and an angle of depression. So what ends up happening if they're dealing with an angle of elevation? That means you 
or an object is down here at the bottom and you're looking up. So it ends up creating this angle down here. That is your angle of elevation. What happens with our angle of depression though is this time you or the object is up here. So this would be your normal sight line. But depression, you're looking down. So you're actually dealing with that angle right up there, which isn't in the triangle, though. So then we have this rule, if you can recall, again from geometry. This line and this line are parallel to each other. And then this line is a line that cuts between them, also known as a transversal. So that means that this angle here, which is the true angle of depression, is the same as this angle down here. So really, your angle of elevation and your angle of depression end up being the same exact angle as this angle down here on the bottom. So let's try some examples. It's going to be very similar to the ones that we were just doing. They just throw in that vocab of angle of elevation or angle of depression. So number one here, suppose the angle of elevation from a ship to the light of a lighthouse is 35 degrees. Angle of elevation down here on the bottom, 35 degrees. You know that the lighthouse is 96 feet tall, so that is 96. How far from the lighthouse is the ship? Round your answer to the nearest foot. So we are looking for this horizontal distance down here. So from the 35 degree angle, I know my opposite side, I'm looking for my adjacent side. So that means it's going to be tangent. The tangent of 35 is opposite over adjacent. So again, I'm gonna multiply both sides times x. And then to get x completely by itself, I'm going to divide by the tangent of 35. Round your answer to the nearest foot. So we had 137.1022086. So that'd be 137 feet would be our final answer for that one. So again, same thing, just a little vocab of angle of elevation, angle of depression. Let's take a look at another one. So we got a pilot is flying a plane 20,000 feet above the ground. So this distance is 20,000 feet above the ground. The pilot begins a two degree descent to an airport runway. Descent, that would be two degrees. Alternate interior angles are congruent, so that makes that one also two degrees. So again, this is going to be the one that we're dealing with. They want to know how far is the plane from the start of the runway. So we're looking for that horizontal distance. So again, we got opposite, looking for adjacent. This is going to be tangent. So tangent of 2 degrees equals 20,000 over x. Multiply by x. And then we'll divide by the tangent of 2. Type it into your calculator. They wanted us to round your answer to the nearest 10,000 feet. So that would be that seven right there. So 570,000 feet is how far it is from the start of the runway. All right, now we're gonna switch it up. And we're gonna find the missing angle. So you're gonna know the full trig ratio. You need to find the missing angle this is going to be something done in the calculator. Again, make sure the calculator is still in degree mode. We don't want it in the other one. We're going to be rounding our answers to the nearest degree. So what we need to do is we need to use the inverse because initially sine of the degree 
gives you your answer. We're trying to work backwards, find the degree, so we have to do inverse. So sine A of 2 thirds. In our calculator, we want to hit second sine. And then your 2 thirds. Round that to the nearest degree. And it's 42 degrees. Next one, we're going to hit second cosine. So second cosine, 0.8415. Round again to the nearest degree, we would have 33 degrees. And then our last one, tangent of 5 halves to the nearest degree would give us 68 degrees. So if you're looking for the angle, you've got to hit that inverse button on the calculator. So the second and then whatever trig function you're using. Here, we're trying to find x. Again, you still need to figure out which two sides of the triangle we have. We have the opposite side from angle X, and we have the hypotenuse. So that's going to be sine. So sine of X equals 25 over 40. I'm going to type that in my calculator. Second sine of 25 over 40. And I get 38.6, so to the nearest degree, I would get 39 degrees. All right, two more. In a rectangle A, B, C, D, diagonal A, C is drawn. There we go. C, D is 8. AC is 13. Find the measure of angle ACD to the nearest degree. So we're looking for that angle to the nearest degree. I have my adjacent side and I have my hypotenuse. So that means I'm going to be using cosine. Cosine of x equals 8 over 13. Go ahead, pause the video for a second, type it in your calculator. should get x equals 52 degrees to the nearest degree. So we had to round that. And then our last one here, we have Harold is hang gliding off a cliff that is 120 feet high. He needs to travel 350 feet horizontally to reach his destination. This is his destination right here. To the nearest degree, what is his angle of descent A? Well, remember, this angle is the same as this angle. The angle has to be in the triangle in order for you to use the side as your measurement. So I know my opposite and my adjacent side. So that's going to be tangent. So 120 over 350. Again, pause the video for a second. Type it into your calculator. Let's see what you get to the nearest degree. You should get 19 degrees. 